guess it'd be it'd be good to have some bio like um where you're from and how you got into the business okay uh well let's see um um Actually, going back, the, my first regular job, I, I you know I was doing uh, recording weddings and bar mitzvahs and that kind of stuff. And some of the things I did in Philly were pretty big, you know, full orchestras uh, at, at weddings and things like that. So it was all high high end um, uh, 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 occasions. And and uh, and I heard that there was an opening um, in in D.C. for a sound man. They're looking for a sound man, so uh, I contacted them, and they uh, I went in, went to D.C. to um, audition for uh, as as their sound man, and and I got the job, and uh, I was doing uh, location recording. Basically, because they didn't have any facilities in house for mixing or narrations or anything, so I would I'd go out and we did a number of, of really pretty big shows. We did four shows for the FBI, all training training shows, and they were it was a full crew, you know, with makeup and and um, uh, uh, location people, and it was a crew of like seven or eight people going out and doing these films. And so that was my first entree into that kind of production. And uh, <clears throat> while I was working there, uh, one of the directors, a young guy, uh, left to go to work for uh, the Agriculture Department Motion Picture Service. And uh, he was there for about, oh, maybe a month or two, and I had been with Norwood Studios for about 11 months. And he said, you know, we the, the guy that's running the sound department for motion picture service is leaving, and they're, they need somebody to take over. Why don't you come down and interview for the, for the job? So I said, okay. So I went down there, interviewed for the job, and, and uh, you know, government doesn't pay that much. And so I, I passed, and I stayed, you know, with Norwood Studios. Then I... Then I got a call back from the guy that was leaving and he said, you know, we'll work it out. So at any rate, I went to um, uh, the Agriculture Department Motion Picture Service and was there for 11 months. And in 11 months, I had never finished a film. Even the stuff that was all shot and everything ready to go before I got there was never finished. It was like... You'd, I'd go out uh, for a month doing uh, working on a film, come back, transfer all the stuff, and and say, and, and say, all right, I'm going, I'm going into editing. And they said, no, no, you got uh, leave that alone. We got this other project. So this kept going, and I was really frustrated. So I, I said, I, I can't. I got to finish something. And and so uh, I said, and so this this guy that uh, had just started came right out of. Uh, school, uh, UCLA or USC, uh, cinema school, and got a job with, with uh, as a, as the the director for uh, motion picture service, and if we were out uh, on on uh, <clears throat> a location for about a month, and then we came back. He said, "Why are you? What are you doing here?" He said, "I need I need uh, credits." So I, I'm I'm doing it for the credits. You you know you've been doing this a while. You know what's going. You should go to L.A. <laughs> you know? So I said, oh, okay. So I took a I took a, uh, a, a a plane, went out there, and landed a job in in a in a music um, mixing house, um, selecting music for a film. Like I ended up doing with uh, with. Um, uh, NFL, uh, but it was uh, really crude, just spinning in black vinyl discs, no transfer to tape or anything like that. Anyway, I was there for about a year, and uh, things weren't going well over there, and they and, and so they they let about five, four or five of us go, and I started doing location recording again, and did really well. Then I got a call 
uh, from uh, uh, my good buddy that I had worked on those weddings and bar mitzvah shows. Um, he had just started with Blair Productions, which was the um, uh, the beginning of NFL Films. It was Ed, Ed Sable's company, Blair Productions. And he said the the music director uh, for NFL Films is leaving and going with Ilya Kazan on the arrangement as his music editor. Oh. So, wow. Okay. And and so uh, I spoke to Ed on the phone. We we talked about and I, and coming from Philadelphia and the, and of course and the NFL Films is in Phil, was in Philadelphia. And my wife is from Boston, so we, you just jump in a car and you go to Boston in five hours, as opposed to taking a plane from L.A. to Boston or Philadelphia. So anyway, I accepted the position and went and and uh, flew out to uh, uh, to Philly and and um, got the job. And you know the rest. Okay, great. Did sixteen years at it. Sixteen years at NFL Films and and then started APM. Um, so I was there for six, uh, APM six years and opened up, we, we started that company and I ran the company for six years and then went to Killer Tracks after that uh, um, and was at Killer Tracks as VP of sales for 16 years, I guess, and then retired from Killer Tracks to do what I'm doing now as a uh, consultant. And, uh, and 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 sell uh, you know broker uh, music entities. Hmm. So that's my background. Um, I was wondering, could you describe just the process of picking music for the films that were edited, and and how you went through that? Well, um, <clears throat> for all the weekly shows. All the music was pulled. Well, we worked in 16 millimeter. Uh, uh, the music was on 16 millimeter tracks, uh, and uh, it was it was mono. <clears throat> and uh, I I had probably maybe a hundred or so uh, rolls of the 16 millimeter. Um, a hundred, maybe a hundred different songs, or maybe it wasn't quite that many. Maybe it was 50 or 60, and they were all set up, uh, you know, in, in, in my room, my editing room, and um, the film would come in, and uh, and I would go through it uh, one time and, and um, uh, indicate all the changes and the, what what type of music uh, it was. I mean, it was all big, heavy, you know, most of it was for action music, but there were some other uh, other pieces that that um, that Sam Spence had done, and I would just go through, mark up the film, and then lay the tracks in, edit the tracks, uh, and uh, and then uh, end up with a, with a half hour uh, of music on two tracks because I would go from one track to the other when I was mixing. And that was after. All right, so uh, I would I finish the music, and um, and then um, I would go into the studio uh, where I had my mixing board, and uh, whoever was narrating the film, uh, it could have been any number of, of people over the years, and they would narrate uh, the the editor. Uh, who did the film would also do the script the narration. He would write, uh, have all the narration set up, um, the script itself, and then the narrator would come in, uh, and he would read to the read to the picture with, with the with the editor uh, cueing him when to start, when to stop, and while that was going on, I would be marking up my. Uh, my um, lead sheet, the sheets that told me when music came in and when it, went, it would go out and when it would segue to another piece, that sort of thing. And I'd write in all the uh, the narration starts and stops right onto my, uh, my cue sheets. 
And then after the narrator was done, um, I would then go back and, and mix the, the film. Uh, and that was usually, uh, if, if there was a half hour film, it was usually about maybe 45 minutes to an hour to do that. Um, if it was the hour show, which was this week in the NFL, uh, it would take me, obviously take me longer because it was a longer production. Uh, but for the hour show, I had an assistant and uh, he would do uh, half the film and I would do half the film and we would come in at like four in the morning to do that. Uh, because uh, the narrator would come in about eight o'clock or so, nine o'clock, and we had to have our, uh, our you know, our part of it done, and um, uh, and and so for the hour film, we would, uh, uh, you know, I, I would do the same sort of thing, which was to um, na- record the narration, do all my markings, in and out markings on my on the on the cue sheets. The logs, and and then after they were finished, after the narrator had completed his job, I would then go back in and mix the film. So um, obviously there there was also uh, other um, uh, on camera stuff that Steve would do, or someone else would be would be on camera, and uh, then I would I would go back and. It was recorded, but I needed to level it out and everything. And, and so then that lip sync, that on screen um, uh, portion, would be edited into the film. Uh, and, and so all the levels had to be correct right through it. So that's how we did the, the hour show. And it was, it was always. Uh, the same batch of music, maybe maybe you know thirty or forty different pieces of music uh, that we use, we use in different you know at, at different times depending upon what it was on the film that we were that I was laying music to, and that's how we did pretty much everything. Monday, Tuesday, Monday was the game of the week, and and Tuesday was the this week in the NFL, which was. A compilation of, of all the all the games that were played, uh, and then Wednesday, Thursday, we did little ten minute segments for uh, Monday Night Football and and uh, some other uh, short uh, segments for CBS or NBC or ABC, you know, and and those were all done for um, for the following week. So that that's that was our weekly um, job. Uh, the uh, once we got through the season, then it was all highlight films, and that they took longer to do because I I used a lot of library music for that. Once in a while, there there will be there would be a standard piece of music uh, that we use for the weekly shows for some of the action segments, but um, I used a lot of library music, uh, KPM and Bruton and uh, a, a number of different libraries that, that we had on hand. And I would work with the the editor. He would bring in the film and we, we'd go, I'm sorry, you were going to say something? No. No. no that's right. um, we would, uh, I'd work with the narrator, go through the high, his highlight film decide where we wanted to make music changes. I would then go back and, uh, after he left and, and put in the music, uh, lay out the music for for the various sections. And then they, the editor would come back and then I would go through the uh, his film using the music that I, that I would suggest he use or be in the, his film. Sometimes we make changes Sometimes he'd say, "Great, that sounds great," and and then I would edit the music um, uh, to the film, and um, and then the narrator would come in whenever that was, and we would narrate the film. He would then take the narration and lay that into his film exactly, you know, tighten it up, uh, open it up, whatever he needed to do, 
uh, and then he'd come back to me with the narration track and, and, the, and the film. Um, I would have my two tracks of, of music and put that all together and go into the studio and actually mix the film. And usually the, the uh, editor would sit with me while I'm mixing the film. And it was, it was always uh, the possibility that, that um, Ed Sable would pop in and want to watch. And it was, I didn't want him there because he was always saying things about this or that or that. So I would, after I had my fill of Ed Sable's remarks, um, I would just keep going over one segment of the of film until it drove him crazy and he would leave and then I'd finish <laughs> up the film. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he, he would be sitting in front of the con, uh, of my console, down below the console on the couch, and, and every once in a while he'd throw his hands up so I would see his hand in front of me. That, that, you know, maybe you could do this or maybe that or maybe then I'd say, okay, and then I'd just go over that one section, you know, that may <laughs> run 30, 30 seconds, and, and, and I'd say, how was that? He'd say, uh, no, no, try it again, and then I, I do it, and I'm not making any changes because it was perfect, you know, as far as I was concerned. <laughs> but but for him, he, he was, and then, and I kept, I said, God, I just can't get this right. Now. I don't know what's going on. He said, Well, call me when you get it right, and he'd walk out. And you know, it it, it wasn't anything. He just needed to have his say, you know, and um, and. Uh, I, I, in the, the first year or so when, when he would come in for the, when we first started doing them in the house, because we used to go, all the highlight films and specials were done in New York. Mm-hmm. And I would go to New York to, you know, to um, uh, kind of ride shotgun on the, on the show. And, uh, and, and I kept saying, why do we need to do this? You know, the, especially with doing, um, um, John Fassenda, when he would narrate the specials, every time we went to New York, it was he would sound different. And I said, this is necessary. You know, we're spending all this money in New York. I can do this. I do all the weekly shows. He said, okay, you do them. And then, you know, he would come in and, and, and want to supervise the mix, and I'd get, get a little crazy, and he would leave. But uh, <laughs> at, at least John always sounded like John. You know, in New, and when we go to New York, every mixer was different, and and so that first, very first year uh, that we that we were doing the work in house, because we used to go to um, uh, to D.C. to do the shows. When I first came to NFL Films, that first year, <clears throat> we didn't have our own labs, and I didn't have. Uh, all I did was. <coughs> select music and, and um, had it transferred to a 16 millimeter so I could edit. And then um, for, the, for the weekly shows during the season, we would go on Monday morning, we would go to Washington, D.C. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Um, to, um, to, to have the shows actually edited and produced at, at Capitol Film in, in D.C. And that happened, I think, for just maybe the first year. I don't remember whether we did a second year there, but we we got we we set up our own labs, which was you know to to, um, uh, uh, to develop all the film that came in uh, from from the uh, weekend. And um, once we got our lab up and running which may have been the second year or, or possibly the third year. But um, once that was done and, and we put in my studio so that I could um, do, the, do the narrations there and make, do all the mixing, so we wanted to be completely in-house and, <clears throat> and not have to go to, uh, to D.C. because all it meant taking not just me, uh, uh, but all the editors, too overnight kind of thing and it was a pain in the neck and wow. 
and uh, nobody really wanted to do that. So we got our own, once we had our, our own studio set up <clears throat> and lab to to uh, develop all the film and allow the the editors to to work in uh, in Philly and not have to take that trip to uh, to DC, things were much smoother. But it was a learning experience because I had never done any mixing. I had done music editing, but never did any mixing uh, prior to coming to, uh, to NFL films. And um, so w- once uh, once we finished at at uh, Capitol, and that one year or two years that we did that, <clears throat> it was a learning experience for me. And so I sort of learned my craft. Having having somebody else do the mix, and um, but once once we got uh, our own setup, a lab and and, and sound studio, uh, things went much smoother, and uh, we rarely had any problems. So you told me before the process of the actual picking out the tracks, you had all the vinyl there from the different libraries. If you use library music. Um... Yeah, we had we had KPM and Bruton and DeWolf and and uh, that, but that was only for specials. We didn't uh, we didn't uh, use that uh, weekly. Right. So you would needle drop and then request the tape. Is that right? Uh, no, actually, uh, we had uh, for every album a black vinyl disc. We had a, we had a uh, a stereo version. Which we never used stereo. I mean, it was just mono. And on TV, it was only mono at the time. And um, uh, so, w- w- what I would do is I I would make up a list of all the music that you know I, that I selected for that particular show, and I'd, I'd give it over to Tom Grave, who who worked in uh, worked in in the studio, uh, worked in the um, transfer facility. He was part of the sound department, which was my department. The music and sound was my were my departments. Uh, he would go to the audio tapes and transfer them to sixteen millimeter. So every time the we 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 got more of any of the uh, libraries, whether it be KPM, which was my go to library, if we got in two or three black vinyl discs from them, what would accompany them? is the, the tapes, the audio tapes. So we never worked off the black vinyl discs. That was just for auditioning. And I, well, I had a standing order from, uh, from, the, from the company, uh, which uh, Everett Asher, uh, Asher Music Libraries, they handled, they represented uh, KPM and all, all, all the EMI companies that produced these um, these library discs. I had a standing standing order for two of every disc and and the audio tapes to go with it, so that the audio tapes would go to the sound department, and the and the uh, black vinyl discs would go in, into my office and my assistant's office, who who um, would do um, you know would, would do some of, some of the highlight films, but by and large. I did most of the most of the bigger um, highlight films, but we worked off the we worked off those black vinyl discs to select music and 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 then once we selected the music and the the um, editor had approved the, the the music that was going into the film, then I would do most of the editing and work off the uh, sixteen millimeter magnetic tapes. Okay. And did you, did you ever use, mm-hmm. um, let's say, chapel music? I had it, but it wasn't very good. And um, I also had Valentino, which was even worse. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I rarely used it. It was. It depends on um, every year we had um, a, 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 a different company. Uh, one year it would be Asher Music. And the next year it might be DeWolf music because both of those had large catalogs and 
depending upon the deal that I could get from them for unlimited use, um, was, uh, was who we went with. But for the most part, um, the Asher libraries, the, the uh, KPM and Bruton and Deans and Conroy, they were all libraries that EMI would uh, supply me with, and uh, we would always have a, an annual blanket for unlimited use of the library. One year it might be uh, Asher libraries, the next year it might be DeWolf, depending upon the deal I could, I could make. And uh, I pretty much made whatever deal I wanted, really, because <laughs> if, uh, if I went to Asher and I said, oh, I'll give you X number of dollars for unlimited use, they said, no, it's, it needs to be more than that, then I would go to DeWolf and say, all right, I, you know, here's the deal. You know, this is what I want to spend for the year. And they would either say yes or no. And then, you know, it was usually yes, you know, because we use a tremendous amount of music every year and it was all on network. So the, the performance income for the libraries was, was very good. Well, how much money are you talking to get that deal for a year? Oh, God. Uh, I, geez, I don't remember. It might have been like 20000 or 30000 something okay. in that neighborhood. And just bounce back and forth between the two of them and uh, get the best deal I could. Yeah. And they were always very happy because, you know, uh, the, the networks paid, uh, well, it was a, a performance income would come from ASCAP or BMI, um, depending upon where the writer was, uh, was and it all went through the libraries, whether it was the Wolf or, or, uh, or Asher. So they were, they were always happy at the end of the year, even if I beat them up on the, on the sink side, you know, the yearly, they, they made twice, three times that, um, in, in performance income. Wow. How about Southern? Did you ever use them? <laughs> Actually, I did. That was my very first library that I ever worked with when I was at, uh, in D.C. working for uh, Norwood Studios. Uh, I had not really worked with uh, any libraries until I got to uh, Norwood Studios as their sound man. And um, uh, that was way back in 64. <laughs> 64, I remember going to... Uh, to DC to work for uh, Norwood Studios, and they had the Southern Library. In fact, it's funny that you mentioned Southern because uh, I was uh, I just found out that Roy Cohn, who was ran that library, is in um, uh, Rancho Mirage, and so I emailed him and tried to I, I wanted to 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 get together with him for a drink or something. Uh, I had uh, been in contact with him a few, few years back when when uh, his name came up uh, in, I don't know, I guess it was in LinkedIn or something, and I reached out to him and, and uh, told him who I was and who I worked for, and he got back to me and said, yeah, yeah, I remember Norwood Studios, and he used to travel around um, with his uh, black vinyl discs in, in, the, in the trunk of his car. And that's and he would go to different companies and give them the music to you know to get the sync fees and performance income, but uh, he hasn't chosen to. Maybe he's. I, I look. I tried to find out if it, maybe he passed away or something, but uh, he was um, uh, he was quite the guy way back then because there were, there weren't that many libraries out there. Southern was one of them and. And and the other one was Valentino, um, and uh, neither one of them were great. But <laughs> don't if you talk to Roy, don't tell him I said that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I had used Southern music since you know since the '60s, so I'm sure. They, and besides which, I do. I, Pure Music owns or uh, owns that catalog and and uh, i i know people that appear and and uh, um do you think any southern made it into nfl films or probably not uh 
Maybe, but I, you know, it was not a go-to library for me. So, um, and I can usually find everything I needed at KPN or DeWolf. You know, and there was a big difference in in, in the styles of music um, between those two libraries. And uh, I always thought that uh, that uh, that KPM was you know was much much better uh, for the kinds of things that we did. I got a story for you about NFL. <laughs> Good. This is uh, this is uh, kind of funny. Um, when I first came to NFL, um, Ed Sable, I guess it was maybe two or three years into it. And he said, um, there's this guy that's going to do some music for me, uh, for us at, um, he's in New York and he's going to produce this music for us. I said, oh, okay. You know, Sam does, yeah, Sam does the stuff for, you know, for the highlight films, but, but this guy is going to, uh, is going to produce some different things. I said, okay. He said, I want you to go to New York. Uh, for this session, it's uh, it'll be a three day session. A lot, it's going to produce a good bit of music. So I said, oh, well, okay. So I went to the session, you know, and and he calls me uh, in this in the second day, and he said, so what do you think about the music? How, how's it going to work really well with our films? I said, no, actually, no, I don't think it'll work at all. It's it's kind of like jazz, and you know. Um, it, it, you know, our stuff is uh, um, is rough and tumble, and it's, there's lots of drums, and it's exciting, and it's uh, and this is kind of like jazz, like jazz. You know, the music the music's great, but uh, you know, he said, "You mean we can't use it for?" I said, uh, "Well, uh, you know, you, you, it, it's really up to the editors and." You know, when I, I pull music for them, if they want it in, I'll use it because it's, it's quality. It's good, well-produced. So I said, oh, my God, okay, we'll finish up the session and then bring music back. And I said, okay. You know, because he, didn't, he never asked me uh, about my opinion on, on these guys that were going to produce this music. So, anyway... It, it sat around. We tried to use it in some of the some of the highlight films here and there, but it was it just really wasn't our stock and trade. It wasn't the kind of music that we normally use. Okay, so um, and it was it was a relatively small group, maybe uh, I don't know, eight ten piece groups, uh, and and so um, anyway, as time passed, and I guess it was in this. 70s, maybe mid 70s. Um, I said, I, I, you know, I'm going to do something with this music. So I, I contacted a couple of people that I knew in New York that, that supplied music, uh, background music for films. And I, I reached out to this one guy and I said, I have this light jazz stuff. Maybe, you, you know, maybe you could use it. And, uh, and then you know, you pay us for the for the uh, for the sick fees, and he said, "Yeah, that sounds great." So I said, "So I said, what do you think of it?" He said, "Oh, it's great, but you know, it's pretty good music. I can, I can, I'm sure that I could use it." So I said, "Well, let me know, you know, if you place it in a film or whatever." Anyway, a month or so, two maybe two months later, I get a call from this this musician and he said uh hi i'm so and so so and so and i was in the recording session for the that jazz the the, the pretty that three-day jazz uh uh recording session um trumpet player or whatever he was i don't remember so i said oh that's nice uh, uh, what, what are you up to now he said well no, i'm calling you because i just saw this film and it had all this all the music in it from from beginning to end of the um, of that session that I that I worked on for NFL Films, I said, "Oh, really? Well, what was it?" He said, "Well, it, it was it was a film called um, Deep Throat." <laughs> I said, "What the hell is that?" So he said, "Well, it's a it's a porno." 
I said, you've got to be kidding me. I don't know anything about it. So anyway, I knew there was only a couple of places that I had placed the music. So I called one, one, one of the places, and they said, no, we haven't used it yet. And the other, the other place, they said, yeah, we, uh, <clears throat> we, we uh, gave out that music, uh, a good chunk of that music, because the guy came in and listened to what we had, and, and I gave it to him, and, and I hadn't heard back from him. I said, how long ago was that? He said, well, about a month ago. I said, well, I, I think uh, that music has been used in the production. Did you get paid? He said, no, I haven't heard anything. So uh, he's, he said, well, you, you, you want to call them? Here, here's their number. So I, I get on the phone, and I call this guy, and he said, uh, yeah, we used it. Just like that. Yeah, we used it. Huh. I said, yeah, I saw it in the film. Um, you know, you have to pay for that usage. He said, you're kidding me. And he said, no, I'm not kidding you. So... Um, uh, I, I, I he, you know, he said, well, you know, call me back. It's, okay. So I, uh, I, I checked around. I got a copy of the film. And I played it, you know, Ed, Ed was there and Steve and you know, pretty much <laughs> everyone. Once they found out it was a porno, everybody came in for the viewing. So, okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it was we had a full a full house in my studio, and that place could hold twenty thirty people easily, you know, in my studio. So they said, "Oh, good use of music." <laughs> <laughs> but Ed was pissed off, you know. He said, "Oh my God, I mean, this, this you know we got to get paid for this, or we got to get killed, or we I don't want this, you know." Anyway, um, <laughs> I find out. Uh, you know, I find out uh, later uh, that uh, <clears throat> they weren't they weren't didn't want to pay for it. So I called Ed and I said, Ed, here's this guy's number. Maybe you know, maybe you should get your one of your lawyer friends to give this guy a call. So he said, okay, uh, and he calls this guy, gives him the number, and a week or so uh, get, we get a call back from the lawyer and he said, uh, you need to find yourself another lawyer. I'm not, I'm bailing on this. I don't want to have anything to do with it. So, I, so he, uh, Ed comes back in and tells me that, uh, you know, uh, that our lawyer said he's, he's not pursuing this, that either we find another lawyer or deal with it ourselves. So I said, I don't understand, you know, why? And, and, and then Ed tells me, this is this, the people that produced this, the money that, that produced this film was all mafia money. Yeah. So I said, oh, shit. Well, I'm not sure I want to deal with this. You know, he said, well, give this guy a call. Give him a deal on it. Get, you know, get paid for this. And, um, and just do one, two, three, and that'll be it. So I called this guy up again. And I said, uh, well... I'm going to make you a deal you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, what are you talking about? I said, look, you can have the rights to the music for $10,000. This film is going to go through the roof. You're going to make a ton of money. And that's, you know, 10 grand and that'll be it. He said, okay. So he sends us the 10 grand and that was the end of that. But, but, um, it's still in that film, you know, it, it was never taken out or anything because it really worked well and, it, and they did a good job. And our musicians did a great job in the re in the session. And then uh, that was my story about um, <laughs> Deep Throat. No, that's, that's the Deep Throat story. I wonder what, um, what music that, that was, what composer, who that was. Oh, um... Oh God! It, well, what wasn't Tony? I'll tell you that. Um, uh, it wasn't like uh, William Luce or someone like that. No, no, Bill Luce. No, oh, no. Okay. No, this this was a well. Well, Bill Luce was pretty well known in in the in the library business, um, and but uh, and he did some he did some music actually, Bill Luce wrote for 
Everett Asher, and yeah. he Everett Asher had the uh, the uh, KPM libraries, the EMI libraries, and Bill Luce um, wrote a, a good good bit of music for him. So I had some of his library, I had some of his music in our library that you know I, I really didn't use it very often because of you know I, I wasn't sure about the licensing aspect of that and. And I knew that with KPM or any of the major libraries that it, uh, you know that I was using, that it was it was going to be fine. You know, I I, did, I had to be very careful because I didn't want to have any problems with licensing or or not licensing. You know, uh, we had to be very careful because NFL Films was was suable. You know, mm -hmm. uh, big time. So. We were always very careful to, to make sure that all our music was um, was licensed and, and uh, paid for so we didn't have any problems. So I have a question about that. I've always wanted to ask you this, um, and that leads perfectly into it. Um, the 1980 season highlights of uh, Saviors, Saints, and Sinners. Remember that? Season? Oh, yeah. So I went through that and identified a lot of the music for it, and I was really surprised. There were the usual people that you like, like Keith Mansfield and and John Scott yeah. or other folks, but there were a lot of. I just saw I just saw Keith Keith Mansfield uh, two years ago. He 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 came. I kept in touch with him, and he, and he came into Palm Desert, and we played golf, and it was very nice. He's a great guy. Keith. Yeah, great guy. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you. no, ahead. that's great. I want to talk about him as well, but because um, I know he's a favorite of yours. But here's a, here's a list of the music that I went through and figured out, and I was curious even how mm -hmm. this happened. So um, the Dixie Dregs, Miko, um, uh, let's see, Steely Dan, Styx, John Luke Ponte, Diodato Genesis, um, Ennio Morricone, and finally yeah. a song yeah. from Anim Olympic soundtrack. We've made it to the top. Huh. How did that all get in there? As far as the rights goes, or, um, I was wondering how that was. Well, done. we 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 paid. I, I don't remember actually writing letters or whatever or making contact, but, <clears throat> but everything in that in those in those shows were licensed. We never used anything. Um, we, we had, um, oh, okay. Uh, we are the champions, the queen. Uh -huh. So, you know, yeah. uh, <clears throat> they contacted us with the song and they said, would you guys like to use this in one of your, one of your films? And I said, yeah, sure. That, that would be great. They, I don't think we ever paid for that because mm -hmm. they came to us and said, would you, would you put that in your film? You know, and, and we did. But um, well, that yeah, was, that uh, was the only time I ever yeah. saw that much popular music that was already on an album somewhere used in an NFL film. Uh, where was what was what was that? What was the show? It was the 1980 the, the, the show, the... 1980 highlight film of uh, uh, Saviors, Saints, and Sinners, which is considered. For the Saints? A classic. For the Saints? No, it was the 80, 1980 season highlight, but the title was Saviors, Saints, and Sinners, and it's considered oh. kind of a masterpiece of your work. I think it was you worked on it, and it was the kind of towards the end of your time there, maybe. Yeah, well, 80, yeah, I left in 80, 84. Yeah. September of 84. People uh, love that <clears> film <throat> and what you but, did with it. I'm just surprised there was so much popular music in it. That, you know hey yeah uh, i don't know um that had to be it had to be one of steve's shows okay uh, steve sable shows yeah um personal you know he, in, that he edited and, and selected he selected a lot of the music himself and okay. then uh, you know we go through the film and he'd say i want to use this here this here this and if it was popular music uh, one of the uh, secretaries would 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 then run it down, and uh, if he's getting it off the disc, you know, we had all the information, you know, the writer, the the publisher, and and would uh, 
license it. We very rarely had any problem licensing music. You know, we, once in a while, I guess we would get uh, one of the one of the uh, publishers might say no or charge us. I don't know, like. Thirty thousand dollars or something. We're not going to pay that kind of money, so we just find something else to put in. But but Steve Steve actually for his films he would uh, he would come in with maybe out of twenty or thirty pieces of music that were going into the film he might come in with like eight or nine and then I would select with him select the rest of the music that went in. But he he knew just what he wanted and. And he would uh, once we got the uh, we got the okay on uh, on the use of the music, uh, he would edit his film to the music, as opposed to or he'd come in to me and say, okay, this piece runs two minutes and thirty thirty three seconds. I need exactly one minute twenty two seconds. Can you edit that? Really hard with when it's songs, you know, oh, yeah. because you have lyrics to deal with, and it, it was. It was tough, so I would, uh, you know, I, I might come back to him with something. Although <clears throat> he wanted a minute and twenty-two, uh, I might come back to him with a, a minute seventeen, or or uh, maybe a little bit longer. But, but it had to, you know, you can't have bad edits. So uh, it worked out really well for us when when he would give us a time, and that was always a rough cut for him that timing. And I would, I would, um, I would edit as close to that timing as possible, and then he would just tighten up the film to uh, to to uh, match the length of the of the piece of music. So, or, or and he and he would say to me about a piece of music, I want this to come in here, and I want this to come in here, and I would I would edit the piece of music and give it back to him, and then he would. He would go to his film and, and uh, tighten up or, or loosen up the film to suit the piece of music because it, you know he didn't want a bad edit and I sure as hell didn't want a bad music edit in in uh, in what I was delivering to him so it worked out. Steve was really great, especially when it came to music. Hmm. He was a good guy, really a good guy. Yeah, yeah, much and... better than his father. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Funny thing on this list, there's actually film scores in it that had already been released, like James Horner's Battle Beyond the Stars, and um, also John Scott's The Final Countdown, that famous theme from that very triumphant. Mm -hmm. yeah. and they actually used the actual music yeah. in there, not having Sam compose something a sound alike. They actually oh, put... right, right. So well, interesting. It, it, it... Yeah, well, you would have to get the rights to use the soul. Yeah. You know, not the version, not not the uh, original version. But if you're going to do it, if you're going to have Sam do it, oh. then um, you need the rights for the underlying work. Mm -hmm. You know, the the music itself. So then Sam would take that music, and, and there might be some changes in it or, or whatever. But but basically, it was that song. But he would record it. Yeah. But most of the time, they tried to use the original if it was possible. <laughs> Sometimes it wasn't possible. They wouldn't get, we couldn't get the rights for it. Yeah. So we and, didn't use it. And this was a pre-Super Bowl version of the 1980 season film. Then the post-Super Bowl mm -hmm. version of the same film, and it's what's on DVD, is all Sam Spence tracks. Yeah. So yeah, I think, well, I, and I think yes. the, the mechanical rights and having to deal with that, I think it was all Sam Spence after that, because I think the rights are probably, like you say, tricky. Yeah, it would have been expensive and and not worthwhile. Yeah. Um, we, they made good money from from airing super uh, the uh, film from the Super Bowl, uh, but not enough to make up for fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars for for film. You know, for the sound rights, uh, music rights, for one piece or two pieces of music, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. You know. You um you said uh, Steve Sable was really great to work with when he passed away. Um, you you yeah. mentioned that to me. He was a good boss. You said he was great. Yeah, he was. Uh, his door was always open. You could always walk in and see what he's doing and talk to him about music. And uh, he he was he was great. Uh, NFL films lost a, a, 
a fine artist because he could do everything. He could shoot, he could edit, he could write scripts, he could pick music. I mean, he's just all around a uh, great filmmaker. Really yeah. good, really good. He so was. much better. I mean, his, his stuff was so much better. It was a whole step above. And we had good editors. You know, we had good guys that could write good scripts and, and, uh, but, but Steve was Steve, you know, and, and uh, it wasn't because he was you know, the, uh, the boss's son. It was because he was good. You know, uh, my first entry into figuring out this music that you edited and seeing the credits with your name in it, which caused me to kind of try to reach out and talk to you about it was uh, that Super mm -hmm. Bowl three film, um, with the jets oh, and the God. Colts. And uh, yeah, yeah. It, that was amazing. It had 31 tracks of music in the film now, you know, mm -hmm. it's 23 minutes allowing for commercials. It's a lot of music. I think that's maybe your record. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, you know, that was, I don't know that that was the first film I did, the first Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. No, maybe it was it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and I never really thought that that was a particularly good score. You know, it was it was a good, it was okay. But there were other films that I that I worked on that I thought that the score was better um, than that. Um, I remember there was uh, there was one film that I I don't know who's which editor it was, but it was either Rod, Bob Ryan or may have been Steve's. No, I don't think it was Steve's. But one one of the one of the older guys came in with a with with a film that it was um uh, it was a highlight film, and it was I don't remember which highlight, but we were having a terrible time finding a piece of music for when the team came out it was it was uh, a lot of a, a lot of uh i guess they made the fog and the, and the team ran out through the fog and uh it, you know I, I must i must have had eight or ten pieces of music that i had pulled for that and it, none of them worked right and <clears throat> i remember that i was um Working on the film of light, and and uh, uh, I came across a piece of music, and and I and I laid it against uh, laid it against the uh, picture, and I said, "Oh my God, this works so great!" And and it wasn't something that I would really expect to work in that in that particular film. So I brought the editor back in the next day, and I said, uh, "You know, I want I want you to have keep your." Your mind open here, and and just watch the film and listen to the music, and uh, and with no narration, you know, just listen to it, and and don't jump all over me, just listen to it. And I I played it for him, and um, I I started the music very very low, just you could barely hear it coming out of the movie all. And I just, as these guys came, it was all super slow motion, guys coming out. And I just kept playing music louder and louder and louder. And God. and after it was over, he just said, oh, my God, I can't believe that piece. I would have never selected that. I said, well, neither did I until I did. And it was it was um, a, a bagpipe music. Okay. I don't know if you... Uh, it, if you've seen any of the films, but I think it was right at the very beginning of the film. Um, was it and a, I don't remember what. Was it what, a Super Bowl or a season film? or? Uh, I thought it was just a highlight film, a season okay. film, but I may be wrong. I'll look for but it. it. It just worked. And, and I remember when we, when we showed, because they would show the film, you know, to all the editors, to everybody, as the films were finished, they would always show the film to the to the whole company, and and I had never gotten so many um, uh, kudos 
when that film was done, they said, oh, my God, that just, you know, who would have ever thought, you know, that, that this, that type of music would work in a football film, but boy, did it ever. And, and it wasn't necessarily the best film that I had ever worked on, you know, I mean, as far as the score is concerned, but that piece of music worked like gangbusters, you know. Mm-hmm. It's something I remember from way back when. Well, I noticed with that Super Bowl three that you did, it separated it from the previous NFL films style, which was a lot of kind of college football marches. Yeah, marching bands. Yeah, yeah, we got away from when I and I got there. We got away from that very quickly. You know, it was just too old style. You know, and and it needed to be with the with the photography the way. You, it was shot and, and uh, um, the narration, you know, I'm sure it was, uh, it was uh, John Fassender that narrated it. And it was my first shot of, of actually doing a Super Bowl in house. But it's a, a, extremely know. impressionistic. And I think it, you know, captures yeah. an emotion of the older Unitas, yes. the young Joe Namath, oh, yes. and then the quiet moment. Yeah. At the end, as they walk off the field, yeah, you know, it depend. It really depended on the on the editor, um, and and what they wanted to do, and and uh, you know how good the editor was, really. So, who was your favorite composers of library composers that you worked that you picked? Oh God, most of them were from KPM, Johnny Hawksworth, and and. Uh, your favorite you told me about was uh, Keith Mansfield. Mm-hmm. You'll... Yeah, he was great. But the, uh, it, all of those guys, uh, all, all the big writers for KPM were all very good in in their own way, you know. Um, but uh, KPM was my go-to library. And uh, I think I used more of their library than any any library, you know. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah, you know, Mansfield was is was great, g- terrific composer, great guy. When I when I first um, uh, started with with APM uh, after leaving NFL, uh, I went to uh, I was asked to come to London and and. Um, uh, and and talk to the composers, and and so uh, it was uh, it was great. Uh, we there was a it was a cocktail party, and there was God, there had to be thirty uh, thirty composers in there, and we were sitting around talking about the music. And it was very it was it, very casual, and <clears throat> and one of the composers got up and, and, and said, "Well, you know." Uh, you, you you really know our library and what do we need to do? You know, what 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 do you need from us? And I said, you guys just keep producing what you're producing. I, you know, I, I use everything. You know, when I, when I, when it's when it, it's such a great library. You don't need any direction from me. Just keep doing what you're doing because it's it's a great library and the music in it is used over and over and over. And you guys are making really good money, right? Oh, yeah, they're all nodding, you know. Yeah, <laughs> making good money. And, and I said, so, so you know, you don't need any direction from me. You guys were producing this long before I came along. What do you need my input from? You just keep producing what you're doing and keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So it made them all happy, but uh, uh, we're looking for direction. And I couldn't give them any direction. These guys were all, you know, pros, and and they've been doing it for years, and they knew what what sells because they see their, you know, uh, they they see their reports from from um, uh, from from the uh, um, UK uh, PRS and uh, and. And, and the companies where they they get their performance income from, like we get ASCAP, BMI, CSAC here, they, you know, PRS, it's only one company, PRS, 
uh, for performance income and, and uh, uh, an NCPS for synchronization. So, you know, I couldn't help them at all. They were just zero. They, they do. They do really well. So, I know another one, uh, Brian Bennett. You used quite a bit. Oh yes. Yep. Yep. And uh, I can't see. remember who it was, but one of the one of the best football uh, uh, pieces of music. Uh, uh, you know, in addition to, um, in addition to all the stuff that Sam wrote for, you know, for action, was uh, a piece of music called Heavy Action. Yes. That was used a ton, and it was just so well done. You know, really terrific production in that. And that was uh, Johnny and Pearson? Pearson, right, Johnny Pearson. Yeah. He made a fortune on that piece of music. I got to tell you, we used it a lot, but every I I I would hear it on on TV. Yeah, no, not necessarily in our film, but I just once That's, in a while I would hear it. You but, you hear library music, it, you know, it's unusual. That's a Monday Night Football theme. Yep, and I've heard it in soup commercials, other places, like you said. Yeah, yeah you you can. You, I, I don't think you hear it quite as much now um, because you know, the style of, of music that people are using now are, is, is a little different. But I, I know the guy that, that took that piece of music and, and redid it for Monday Night Football because they were, I don't know why they would, would ever be tired of that, but they wanted a, a, that piece of music done slightly different. And, and, um, and, and the composer who does tremendous amount of work. In fact, I'm selling his catalog right now. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, redid that piece of music for Monday Night Football. It was it's still heavy action, you know, yeah. but it was it, it was produced a little differently. Yeah, more and modern. And Kalaf did that. Okay. John Scott, you used a lot. Um, oh yeah. Richard Harvey that went on to do kind of uh, oh, religious music and orchestral stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he, uh, so many of these guys are classically trained, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, they, they did really well with, with, you know, with library music. They did very well. We use so much music, you know. Um, uh, there for a while, I would... Uh, I was uh, getting calls or, or emails from some of the people in that group, you know, in the, the those crazy people that are yes NFL film music. So that, oh my god, that was my and, fault. So and, I contacted you. Yes, and, yes, and, it was. And I was very, yeah. <laughs> I was excited to to meet with you and hear about your information because we all wanted to know this stuff. But then once it got out, they started uh, jumping all over you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 they were so into that music. And I, they knew all the pieces and everything. And I remember I got, a, I got an email. I guess it was an email or a letter or something. Anyway, saying, do you, do you remember in that, in that highlight from 1972 and it was and right when, you know, the ball was thrown and then you remember that piece of music? <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, remember one piece of music. And I said, no, I don't remember that. But yeah. I, got, I, I got a number of requests about pieces, specific pieces of music. We have the first piece ahead of that and the one behind that, but yeah. I don't know that. I need to know that piece of music. Right. I said, get a life. Get a life. You know? <laughs> wow. Jesus. What do you think that Sam Spence did so well? Well, he was able to take a melody. Well, and the the regular weekly stuff that we used was um, he just had a feel for it. You know, uh, he had been high. He. Um, the two years before 
I got there, got to NFL. Well, it wasn't NFL films. Yeah, I guess it was. Um, uh, Malin Merrick was the composer that I guess Ed had hired. Um, and he, he's the one who came up with all the March music. Yeah. Right? And then w- when, uh, when I got there, Sam just had a knack. Uh, first of all, he was American, and he knew football. Not, not, not soccer football, but U.S. football. And, and so I, I guess uh, I didn't start working with him at all until I was there a year. And he, his stuff was already there. So he started either the year before or maybe it was two years before I got there. So it had to be like 66, 67 that he started writing. And I guess um, I think Steve just – actually, Steve started the same year I did. He came out of college and started working at NFL Films. But um, – uh, I, I don't know who it was that that worked with uh, Sam Spence to give him an idea of what they were looking for. Maybe they brought him in and he watched the film. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But it was that that music he was able to cap, capture the 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 rough and tumble of football, and he he just had a knack. And then Steve, I'm sure, started working with him um, shortly after that and came up with stuff that he wanted produced for the Highland films. But he, he, was, a, he was a novice. I mean, he, he had you know, used cameras, but not, not 16 millimeter stuff, not the kind of stuff that, that NFL used. Uh, but um, he, he could do everything. He, you know, he, would, he would shoot. He'd have a game he would shoot, and then he'd come back and he would edit the film and then narrate, write the script and then select, and not for the weekly shows, but he would, for the highlight films, he would select the music, and, you know, for the most part. He knew what he wanted to use. Um, but Sam had a knack of, uh, of, of um, getting the ens- essence of football. And I was absolutely shocked Years later, when uh, the, the tapes, um, uh, his original tapes, uh, they were stereo, but uh, he, he, he recorded it all at one time. There was, he, he would put up two mics you know, in, 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 the, uh, in the recording studio and record that way. There weren't any what we call stems. There weren't, there weren't rhythms separated from the horn, separated from the strings that there were. It was not like that. He just, rec- he just recorded it. And I went back to him one time. I said, we need to go, you know, go back to your master tapes and, and send me a, another version, another copy, because ours are getting beat up. He said, you have the masters. And I was like, shut up. You mean you don't record multi-track? You know, four-track, six, sixteen-track, whatever. No, two-track. Oh my God. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> At any rate, that's. Um, but he was he was the man. He was the man. So anyway, perfect. I'm going to have to run because I got to eat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so okay. much for your time. I didn't know this would happen. Okay. And I really appreciate that. You, we, Sometimes the best things happen when you're not ready for them or when you're not expecting them. Okay, you, 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 you take it easy, and, and uh, my pleasure. That was, that was wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Phil. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.